Welcome back everybody. This is another video in my tips and tricks series. This is gonna be episode nine of the series. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over the process that I use uh, to weather the exterior of my aircraft models. Now, the process you're gonna see, as I said, is my process. Um, everybody has their own go-to process when it comes to uh, weathering an aircraft. Um, the one I do, it's not quite as difficult as others. I find it a little bit simpler and less time consuming for me to do. Uh, but on the flip side, it's not quite as subtle and detailed as some uh, weathering uh, processes can bring out. Um, I don't do as much detailed oil staining and all that other kind of stuff. It's kind of just a, I, I consider it a brute force type exterior. But if you're a beginner who's looking at a new process and you've never done this before, and it's something you'd like to try, I find this process is one of the easier, less expensive ones to get into. And if you mess it up, it's very easy to reset the model. Um, some of the more experienced uh, modelers out there will use oils. Um, I find that's very easy to make a mistake and it's very hard to fix uh, when you're completed. So uh, again, this is my process. Uh, if anybody out there has something different, um, by all means, don't take my, uh, my advice as the gospel. This is more of a... Uh, a beginner's level, entry level type process that I use. Um, the model I'll be using is the uh, Tamiya 148 scale uh, Falkwolf 190A8. I built it a few months ago, uh, completed the build. Um, you can actually see the uh, um, completed build. Uh, the video is up, my time lapse build is up, and I hope I am going to be doing this in the right direction. I'm pretty sure it will appear in this corner right about now. I should have the link to that video posted. Uh, so you can check that out, see the process I use. So yeah, check out that link. You can see the whole build of that Falkwolf 190A8, including the, uh, the weathering process sort of in a more condensed before and after look. Um, as I said, uh, it's a little bit more of a brute force, uh, rougher technique. I like the way it comes out. There's also gonna be a bit of a difference between how you weather, say, a World War II aircraft and how you would weather you know, a modern jet versus a World War I aircraft. You kinda of have to use some references, take a look at how the aircraft would be weathered in real life and pick the um, technique that fits you best. I mean, my technique, as I said, I tend to use the same technique. I will use different colors, for example, things that have a darker camo scheme, like a night fighter. I would actually use a white or a gray um, weathering uh, wash on it, a paint, a temper paint. I have white and black, so I can make a variation of colors to make each type of uh, panel line stand out a little bit. Uh, the one thing I didn't talk about, I don't believe I talk about in this video, there's also the factor of uh, pre-shading, um, which I can, uh, at the end, I can throw some other uh, quick clips in there to show what a pre-shading, uh, pre uh, even a post-shading looks like. Um, so you can kind of see the difference between the two different uh, uh, a few different techniques that are out there to get the look that you need to get to make the aircraft look uh, the way you want it to look. Um, so I hope you guys get some, uh, some info out of this. Enjoy the video. As always, my name is Sean, and this is Sean's Aviation. So again, for those of you who have seen the, uh, the previous uh, weathering video I did for the cockpits, uh, very similar. I use the same uh, black temper paint. Uh, the difference is I don't, uh, I don't thin it out. Before you've seen I added a bit of uh, hand soap and dish water and uh, water to, um, so dish soap, hand soap and some water to thin it out and get it to set into all the crevices. Uh, when you're doing the exterior, when I'm doing the exterior of the aircraft, I leave it pretty much as it comes out. You'll see here this temp particular temper paint does come out kind of soupy, sort of like a melted milkshake consistency. So that's kind of what I go with right out of the bottle. If your paint comes out like a thicker, gooier, you know, type, then you'll have to thin it a little bit to get down to this kind of consistency. But think of melted milkshake, melted ice cream. Uh, that's kind of the consistency you want uh, for what I'm doing. Um, so it's really simple. It's gonna look like a mess, um, but you literally, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit so you guys can see. So you literally just take your black paint and you just coat it everywhere. I usually specifically aim for the edges and corners that you want it to sit in. Otherwise, you just kind of smush it all around. Um, there's two different ways of doing it. I've done it both ways where you let this dry 
and then you go back with a, uh, a, 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 like a wipe and you wipe it off. Uh, you can also do it wet. Uh, I find um, dry, some of these corners and crevices, it's hard to get the excess out of, whereas when it's wet, it cleans up nice. So you just take a rag. I'm using these lint-free rags just so you don't leave any, any residue on the plane. And you just kind of go through, wipe. You want to make sure that any panel lines you want, you want the, the black wash to set in you hit on a, an angle. Don't go, for example, this panel line here at the tip, don't run down the panel line this way, go across the panel line. And that will kind of force the, the black wash down into the panel line you're working on. So you kind of want to go, I usually go sort of a 45 degree across the, the, the wing. And then you can always grab another one. I just use my tongue. I just wet the tip of it, you know, my tongue, and then you can use it to wipe and it just gets the last little excess off and ensures that what's left is kind of what you're looking for. So there you go. That's uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can see there's uh, a black wash. This wing has none. This wing has some. So it's just a subtle, especially around that aileron, you know, around the little wing, or the gun bump, you can kind of see the um, the details are popping. So then I'm going to move on to the fuselage. The other wing is basically the same. So if I get into this area here, again, coat it. There's a lot of little bits and bobs you kind of want all of this to settle into. So you really want to cake it on thick, especially up around these guns on the cockpit. So set it in there nice and thick. You know, up in this forward, up around this uh, the ring here uh, along the front cowling. So just smush it in there all you can with the, the brush. And you want to grab your little rag and then you can start to... And again, I mean, even though you want to go sort of 90 degrees to the panel line that you're trying to work on, the other thing you want to keep in mind, that at least I do, is you want to wipe with the airflow. Because in reality, if there is any dirt and grime on the airplane, it's going to be pushed back along along the, um, the plane uh, as it's flying. So you want to kind of work against the panel lines in order to um, get it to set into the panel line, but then work with airflow the way the air... Okay, folks, sorry for the break on that. Uh, but as I was saying, you always want to ensure that you, uh, you run your, your cleaning sort of in the direction of the airflow so that any streaks that are left over um, from the application of the black wash uh, look as if they had been, you know, on the airframe and blown there uh, as it flew. So you always want to make sure you try to keep things you know, as realistic as possible. Always again, um, go back, take a look at actual pictures of airframes, go out, look at the real version if you're around, you know, an air show or a warbird or whatnot, go out and look at how, you know, real planes weather. Get a feel for kind of what you're looking at and what's expected. And always make sure that you try to replicate historic, historic, realistic looks as much as possible. Again, modeling is modeling. If you have a particular look you're going for and it might not be quite as accurate as others, do what makes you happy. And again, if this technique doesn't work for you and you have your own, uh, go ahead and, and do whatever uh, works for you. Um, I've seen this done with pastels. Um, you know, like grinding up uh, pastels and, and using the powder. I've seen this done with uh, oil-based paints, you know, mineral paints, using mineral oil to thin. Um, I prefer the water-based tempera paints just for ease of cleanup and, uh, and smell. Again, I have kids in the house, so I'm trying to eventually switch over away from my, my oil-based paints, but just to keep things as, uh, as generic and non-toxic as possible. So I also find the cleanup is a lot easier with the water. You don't have to worry about oil-based paints and oils and, and, and whatnot, leaving stains everywhere in the model room on yourself, etc., etc. Um, there's a certain technique I've seen called a uh, dot matrix in which you actually um, put a, a whole sort of um, 
series of dots of different colors, you know, not just black or brown or gray, but like blues and yellows and reds and oranges and all that kind of stuff. And you cover the model in these little tiny dots, usually using an oil-based product, and then you smear all the dots, again, in, in the direction sort of, of, of airflow. And it, it actually kind of creates this thin, very thin layer, sort of multicolored, um, of a, of a, almost a filter. And it, it's supposed to kind of recreate that look you get in real life of multiple dirt stains and everything built up on top of each other. It's v a lot of work and it takes a lot of practice to get right. And I've only seen a few people online pull it off. But again, do what works for you and what you feel is the best technique for what, not only for your own skill level, but your own situation as well as what you're looking to replicate. Um, I'll show. Uh, I'll throw a picture up here now of the P61 I built, and as you can see, the P61 was built with uh, or painted uh, a solid black. So if you paint it solid black, weathering with a black panel wash doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So in that case, I actually used white. So I I, I made a, a, a gray, I mixed the white and the, the burn of the black there, and I made sort of a, a light gray panel wash. And I did that. And in that case, I'm not necessarily representing dirt and grime. I'm just highlighting the panels. So that you, you know, the panel lines stand out the way they would in real life, where you would visibly see sort of that's the, the lines between the different pieces of metal. And you actually, in real life, you do see that. And it's very hard to replicate in scale models because it's in a lot of cases, it isn't uh, an engraved line the way you see on models. In real life, it's uh, it's an overlap. The two pieces of metal overlap each other, and you get this tiny little lip that's formed where the two pieces of metal overlap. And um, it, that's very difficult to recreate in scale modeling. Your, your your lap would be so small, you know, you wouldn't really see it. And what you're seeing in real life when you see the black panel line is you're seeing a slight shadow created by those overlapping overlapping panel lines. So you can't recreate that in scale modeling accurately. So you have to do a representation of that panel line, which tends to be, in the vast majority of modern kits, um, an engraved line, trench panel line, um, where the seam is. And then you know, you're just going through and sort of highlighting that and allowing the, the colors, the, the shadows to pop and, and make the impression of the panel line. And that's what modeling is. It's never gonna look accurate you're making a representation of the real plane, and so you gotta do things that might not be 100% accurate, but give you the look you're looking for. So as you can see, it doesn't take long to do this. You just kinda have to work your way along. If you feel like there's too much, take some off. If you feel like there's not enough, add a bit more. Work your way down the arc, the, uh, the kit. Finish off your panel lines. Just finish off this tail here, and then I'm pretty much done. And then at the end of it all, you're going to be able to, I'll throw up pictures side by side, if I can figure out how to do that with the editing software, of the, um, the two plane, this, this, this plane, the A8, of the before and the after with the, uh, the black wash. You can get a really good sense of what, um, what the black wash can pull off. But there you go. So there it is, fully black washed, weathered. So two of the um, weathering techniques that I mentioned, but uh, and you may have seen in previous videos, but I haven't actually talked about yet. Um, so there's also the uh, pre-shading technique. Uh, it's a technique I've dabbled in here and there. It depends on, again, what look I'm going for. Uh, but in a pre-shading, I'll, I'll throw up some pictures here. Um, for example, with the, uh, the Falkhoff 190A8 that you saw, I actually did do pre-shading. So in that sense, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the airbrush with a bit of black paint. I mean, you can use whatever color you want uh, in reality, but I tend to find black has the most contrast. And that's what you're doing, you're contrasting the panel lines, ahead, so pre-shading, pre-paint, you're gonna start highlighting. So you're gonna take the airbrush and you're gonna go along and you're gonna follow some of the more prominent panel lines. You don't necessarily wanna do all panel lines. Um, again, as always, look at your historical references, look at some pictures, look at other models, find a look that you are going for and try to replicate that. So you're gonna go along and as you can see in this picture, highlight some of the more prominent panel lines in the black. Um, if you want to go wide or small, whatever you want to do, you can also go along and randomly splatter a bit of black 
here and there just to darken up certain areas. Um, and as well, if you really wanna do a highlight, you can even take white. Um, so if you're gonna have a gray plastic or a gray primer, you can have black on the panel lines and a bit of white in the center of the panel. And when you paint over it, you're gonna actually get that variation in color where the center of the panel will be lighter than the panel lines. So that, um, as you can see, when you do add the paint, you do get the hint of the underlying coat coming through. And uh, it just adds a little bit of extra oomph to that paint scheme. If you have a plane that's heavily weathered, something that's been sitting out you know, in the sun for a long time, you, st you tend to get more, um, more variation in paint color than just black panel lines. So you can then mix up the colors a little bit. You know, you can do uh, slightly different shades of green or, or whatever color you're doing. Um, of your slightly different shades, lighten and darken the top coat, mix and match the panel line. A little bit of mix there with your, uh, with a bit of pre-shading, a bit of post-shading, along with variations in your, your base color. You can come up with a very varied um, mix of, of colors. Um, and then the other thing I, uh, I can do, and uh, again, this might take a little bit more of a steady hand with the airbrush and you can very easily ruin a model, uh, but uh, as you can see with the, uh, the Falco A8, the final picture I posted earlier, I'll put it up here again, uh, and you can see I've got a bit of like staining done. So it looks, you know, there's exhaust staining. You've got the look of, um, ex you know, staining from the, the guns. You have like the, the cordite would blow back over the wings as it was firing its weapons. You'd get, you know, um, streaks from that. Uh, any type of engine exhaust, radiator exhaust, oil coolers, you always get a little bit of leaking and you always get a little bit of variation in color. Uh, so I tend to just use, uh, depending on the aircraft, I usually just use a bit of a black. Um, there's two different colors you can use, I mean, ways you can do it. You can just use strand, uh, standard block paint, thin down a little bit, or you can even use Tamiya Smoke. Uh, it's more of a translucent sort of brownie gray. It looks very similar to what you'd see in exhaust. Uh, so depending on what look you're going for, you can use a variation of these. Um, Using the example of the P61 from before, um, you can see where being on a black plane, you wouldn't have noticed any type of black exhaust staining. So I went with more of a white and brown mix, um, showing the other colors that you would have come out um, with exhaust. Um, uh, aviation gasoline has a very uh, high lead content, so you tend to get a lot of white buildup from the exhaust, um, which looks a little different than it would have you know, back in World War II with my, um, Modern fuels look a little bit more different than old fuels, but you still had a little bit of white mixed in because of the lead. So you have this lead buildup happening on the side of the plane. So with the darker color, you vary the color a little bit and you get kind of what you're looking for. So between all of these different techniques, you can come up with um, something that you like for what you're going for. But uh, when it comes to uh, the look, you just have to practice. Get an older kit and just practice with the exhaust staining, you know, just I tend to do uh, very low pressure, uh, very thinned paint, and give it time to dry in between. And I always sort of airbrush back in the, uh, the direction of the airflow, for example, so it looks like it's being blown back. Um, unfortunately, I can't really do any filming at the paint booth, so I can't show examples of this. I might do a video later in the series showing off how that technique works if I can get a proper setup in there with lights and, and whatnot. But so, that, you know, here's a good a couple of different models I've done with. You can see the different types of exhaust staining and, and gun staining and everything. So again, uh, look at your pictures, look at your references, um, find out how the plane should look and then take a chance, you know, get an older kit, practice on it. Once you feel comfortable, take a chance on the kit. You'd be very surprised at the end of the day how, uh, how amazing you can make a plane look just by varying the paint a little bit. Um, so again, thank everybody for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching guys and as always if you are interested in any of the content you see you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site and if you're interested in any of this content uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much and see you guys next time.